differential equations. An application of differential equations can be the Newton's second law of motion, where F equals ma. And this law states that the acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So the equation F equals ma can be redone since a can be written as a equals dv over dt to describe the change of velocity with respect to time, which will make the equation equal to F equals m times dv over dt. Furthermore, we can transpose f to the other side and divide both sides of the equation by m, which gives us the differential equation of dv over dt minus f over m equals zero. And this is a first-order differential equation which can be used to describe velocity as a function of time. So consider a falling object influenced by gravity and an air resistance proportional to the velocity of the object. There are two forces on the object, the force due to gravity given by the weight w equals mg and the force due to air resistance negative kv. The net force is F equals mg minus kv, and using the second law of motion and substituting A for dv over dt and isolating g, we get the differential equation dv over dt minus k over m times v equals g. So here is a sample problem where a safety helmet weighing 1 pound is dropped from a tower with a height of 2,500 feet with no velocity to test the durability of the helmet and to emphasize the use of safety when working in construction sites. As the helmet falls, air resistance is equal to V over 8 in pounds, where V is the velocity of the ball in feet per second. Find the limiting velocity and the time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. So the given is in feet, so our gravity is 32 feet per second squared. To solve for the mass, we just equate it to the weight equation, and we get that the mass is 1 over 32 pounds. And our differential equation here is the differential equation that we found in the previous slide. And plugging in the values, we get dv over dt plus 4v equals 32. And we find that the integrating factor is equal to e raised to 4t. And multiplying the integrating factor to the entire equation, we can integrate this equation and we can isolate v. And we find that the velocity is equal to 8 plus ce raised to 4t. Plugging in t equals 0, we find that c is equal to negative 8. And that the velocity function is equal to 8 minus 8e raised to 4t. And by taking the limit of the velocity function as the time goes to infinity, we find that the limiting velocity is 8 feet per second. And that is the fastest the object will fall until it hits the ground due to air resistance. So to find the time it takes to hit the ground, we need to find the position function. And the velocity function is the derivative of the position function. So we can integrate the velocity function to get the position function. By doing that, we get st is equal to 8t minus 2e raised to negative 4t plus c. And solving for c by equating t equals 0, we get c is equal to negative 2. So the position function is 8t minus 2e raised to negative 4t minus 2. So we can plug in the given, the 2,500 feet from the problem. We can graph the two sides of the equation and we obtain the time of 312.75 seconds, which is the time it takes for the object to hit the ground. Thank you.